seed of Goshi might be nurtured for a short time. Our brother, oh, we all have chances. Hello folks, my name is Jack Tulse, and my dear wife Grace and I are very grateful to OCN for this opportunity to teach the gospel of the kingdom. That's right, it's not just the gospel of salvation, it goes beyond that, it's the gospel of the kingdom. And we're very grateful, and we say that uh, OCN is good soil for you to sow into. You know, the Lord doesn't give according to need. He gives according to good soil. The parable in Luke 19 shows that very clearly. And so he, he gives where the people use the money to the best advantage to, for the kingdom of God. And so we just really recommend to you this is good soil here. Now tonight, I want to just bring to you a little bit about the last days, where we are in those last days. So I'm going to read to you out of Luke, chapter 21. It's going to be verses 20 through 36. I'm going to read them very quickly, and then I'm going to go over them. First of all, 20 through 24. 20 through 24 of Luke 21. Here we go. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed about with armies, then know that its des desolation is near, then let them who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them who are in the midst of it depart, and let not them that are in the countries enter into it. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that nurse children in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, folks, I want you to know, this has already been fulfilled. In 70 A.D., the zealots in Jerusalem rose up, and they massacred the Roman soldiers there in the city. There was just a small group of them, and they massacred them. And so when the news reached Rome... The emperor Nero was furious, and he sent a legion of men to surround Jerusalem and to destroy it completely. And so Vespasian was the general at the time. So they surrounded Jerusalem, and they, there was no way for the people to eat or drink because all supply was cut off. And so they were stuck in the city. But something happened. The Emperor Nero died at this time. And the soldiers in the legion that had been sent to surround Jerusalem said to their general, Vespasian, let's go back to Rome and we'll make you emperor. And we'll guarantee, we'll fight for you so that you can have the throne. Vespasian said, all right. So the people, the surrounding soldiers, withdrew for a month or two to, Jerusalem, to uh, Rome, where they made Vespasian emperor. Once he was made emperor and had quieted Rome and killed his enemies, he sent his son Titus back to Jerusalem with that legion to kill the Jews in Jerusalem and to destroy them for, for massacring the Romans there in Jerusalem. Well, he came back. During that period where there were no soldiers around Jerusalem, the people who had heard Jesus' prophecy, this prophecy that I just read to you, left the city and went to Pella in the Jordan Valley, and they were safe because when the Romans came back, they surrounded the city, and they broke down the walls, and they killed a million Jews inside the city. 
and they destroyed the temple. No stone was left one upon the other because those stones were precious. And they said, maybe there's gold there in between the stone. They tore the stones apart. And so Jesus' prophecy was completely fulfilled. And so it says here, Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Folks, that's happened in our day. In 1967, Jerusalem was no longer trodden down by the Gentiles. But Israel, in the Six-Day War, seized control of it. And from that time to this, it has been in the hands of Israel. They control Jerusalem. Who comes in, who goes out. And so the times of the Gentiles are finished. And this is, this is at least 40 years after that. In fact, <laughs> it's more than that. So that has already happened. And so we can say clearly, these are the last days. These last days are upon us. Let's read on. Now we'll read verses 25 through 36. And there shall be signs in the sun. Now this leaps over the 2,000 years between 70 A.D. and today. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, mark that, begin to come to pass. Then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws near. Verse 29, And he spoke to them a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is now near at hand. So also you, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is near at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Verse 34, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. That means too much of things. <clears throat> and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that that day come upon you unawares. For like a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch you, therefore, and pray always, that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and stand before the Son of Man. <clears throat> Let's start again with verse 25. Let me explain that. <clears throat> verse 25. You know, the sun and the moon and the stars were given by God, it says in Genesis 1, verse 14, to not only give light, but they were signs and, and for seasons and times. Now, the signs that God talks about are being fulfilled today. <clears throat> Let's talk a, a little bit about the eclipses of the moon. Uh, in fact, let's, let's speak about the blood moon. The blood moon is where, when there's an eclipse of the moon, and it has a reddish color, and it looks like blood. Well, these things happen regularly, folks, regularly. However, they don't always happen on Jewish feast days. Now, since these things were recorded, they have happened four times in history, from the time of Columbus, in 1493, I know 1492, he made his journey to America. But the next year, he also came back in 1493. And that's when there was a blood moon. Now, usually when these happen, they happen on the Jewish feast days, a tetrad of them. They happen in one year on the Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles, and the next year, the same thing. And when that happens, folks... It has to do with Israel. This, when the blood moon occurs on the Jewish holiday, Jewish feast days, it always has to do with Israel, either good news or bad news for Israel. And so we have the first three blood moons that happened were 1493, 
when Columbus took Jewish exiles who had been cast out of Spain, brought them to the New World, to America, Amen. notice this, a tie between Israel and America. The second time it occurred was in 1948 when Israel became a nation. And there's another tie between Israel and America because it was the American president who lobbied the other nations to accept Israel and he was the first one to recognize Israel as a nation and signed it into law. So there was a tie between the president of the United States and the people and Israel. The third time it happened was 67, when <clears throat> the Six-Day War took place and Israel defeated the armies of the Arabs. When that happened, America sent supplies, ammunition, and weapons to Israel to help them. Once again, that alliance was strong, Amen. alliance between America and Israel. Amen. The fourth time it happened was 2014 and 2015, last year and this year. And in 2014, at the Passover, that blood moon, when that happened, you say, what was the significance of it? The significance was that the day after the blood moon happened, the Ukrainian rebels told the Ukrainian Jews, get out of here or we're going to confiscate your property we're going to take everything you have. And you will have no more place in the Ukraine. Now, the rebels don't have all the power there now, but they do have the power in the eastern half of the Ukraine. The western half is more oriented toward Europe and the west. But that's a clear warning to the Jews to get out of the Ukraine, just like there was a warning to the Jews when Hitler came to power in Germany. He hated the Jews. And they knew they had to leave. And so many of them left, like Einstein left. He took heed to the warning. Now, the next one took place in the fall of, 19, of 2014. I'm not sure what that stood for. It occurred October 8, 2014. There's no clear indication yet of what that was. But April 4, 2015, this year, the blood moon occurred and it was only observable in the Americas, in North America. North America. It was not observable in Israel. What does this mean? Folks, I believe that this is America's last warning to keep the alliance with Israel and not betray it, not hand over half of Jerusalem to the Arabs, but support Israel. And this was the last warning because, according to these blood moons, the fate of America is tied up with the fate of Israel. If Israel goes down the tubes, America goes down the tubes. If Israel is divided, America will be divided. Very clearly. And that is backed up by Zechariah 12, verse 3, where God says, Every nation that burdens itself with Jerusalem shall be divided. Shall be divided. Now, he's talking about a physical division here. Even as Jerusalem would be physically divided, America will be physically divided. We don't want that to happen. We must stay firm with Israel and heed the warning sign of the blood moons. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's go on. Verse 26. It says, Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. They have already been shaken on the earth. The power of heaven is the power that causes the sun to shine. It's fusion, hydrogen fusion. It's a reaction where two atoms are fused together, releasing huge amounts of energy, which makes the sun as, as hot as it is. So it is the power of heaven Fusion power, it was released on the earth by the United States of America in 1954 when we exploded the first H-bomb. That's the power of heaven on the earth. And that, and that continued when Russia exploded their H-bomb. They're much larger than nuclear bombs. 
Fusion bombs, much larger. They destroy huge areas of the Earth. We used ours in the Pacific. Russia used hers in Novaya Zemlya in the north and almost wiped out that whole island. So the powers of heaven are shaken and men's hearts are failing them for fear, saying, what are we going to do if there's a nuclear war and the fusion bombs are exploded on the earth? Verse 27, then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power and great glory. Now, <clears throat> the writer didn't put these in order, but they're in this coming of Jesus is put in with the signs, with the other signs. Going on, there, it's going to come after these signs are displayed. Verse 28, when these things begin to come to pass, look up for, lift up your heads for your redemption draws near. Hallelujah. Our redemption is drawing near, nearer and nearer. Let's go on. Verse 29, and he spoke to them a parable. Now this is where the figure of speech that he uses stands for something else. So he says, Look at the fig tree and all the trees. Now, folks, over in Hosea 9, verse 10, God says to Israel, I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree at her first time. Now, this was not the people who came out of Egypt because they had no faith. There was no fruit in them. But their children who entered the promised land had the faith. And so, so God saw them as fruit the first time when they came into the land of Canaan and defeated the giants and prospered for a whole generation. God said, that generation had fruit because they had faith. So I saw your fathers as the fig tree at her first time when she first bore fruit. Okay, so he equates the fig tree to Israel. And now the other nations, folks, over in Ezekiel, chapter 31, there's a good story there. God starts out by saying that I made Assyria like a cedar in Lebanon. So Assyria, was he, which was a powerful nation, was compared to a cedar tree, big cedar, many branches, and all the, the fowls of the air, could, the, the other peoples could come under her covering. Then in verse 31, it, it says that all the trees of Eden envied it. All the trees in the garden of God. Well, God's garden is the earth, planet earth. All the trees are the other nations, the nations of the earth. For example, Israel, the fig tree. And Assyria, which has now been destroyed, was the cedar tree. And so God uses trees to symbolize nations. So this is the parable then. When you see the fig tree and all the trees shooting forth, in verse 30, shooting forth means putting out their leaves. And by the way, the leaves are the people coming into their nation and achieving independence. Now there are many nations in the earth, but many of them, 95 of them, at the start of World War II were not independent. They were occupied by colonial powers. So they were not registered in heaven as independent nations. So he says, when they now become independent and they shoot forth their leaves, the people come home, you'll know that summer is near. Summer is a good time for us, all of us. It's a time of of in enjoyment, flowering of fruits, and so forth. So that's the time of the kingdom of God where the kingdom comes to the earth. So he said, so also you, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is near at hand. So he said, when you see these nations come to, come to their independence, and when you see them, Israel, come to independence, You'll know that the kingdom is very near. So then he goes on and he says, This generation shall not pass away until all these things be fulfilled. Which generation is that? Oh, now I know. I can hear your, your minds saying, Oh, wow. they've been saying that for hundreds of years. 
hundreds of years. No, not with the authority of today. Today, all those prophecies have already been fulfilled. Amen. Israel is a nation, Amen. and she possesses Jerusalem, yes. and the times of the Gentiles are finished, yes. and the Lord Jesus Christ is coming shortly. Amen. Jesus said, the generation that sees this will be the generation that sees these things begin to come to pass will be the generation that sees them all happen. And so even verse 27, that generation will see the coming of the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Now he's talking there about the, the parousia, the, 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 uh, what the church has called the rapture. Okay, so because Jesus is going to return in power and glory, to take his people out from the earth to prevent their destruction from the nuclear war which is coming and from the awful tribulation which will be upon the earth. So he says, take heed and watch. Take heed. Don't let the cares of this life deflect or detract from focusing on Jesus. Because he says, like a snare that day will come. On the whole earth, people won't be expecting it. They'll be moaning and groaning about the things that are happening. Oh, this trouble here and trouble there. Look what ISIS is doing. Look what Yemen's, what's happening there. Look at how, how uh, there's earthquakes in Nepal. Look at all this stuff that's going on. Yeah, I know. Bad news. However, the good news is Jesus is shortly to appear. And so it says, watch therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy. Now, it doesn't say to pray that, Lord, please make me worthy. No, 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 no. That's wrong. You pray and with intimacy with the Lord, you get intimate with him, knowing him, and hearing his voice, answering him, and, and, and speaking to him, and he, he hears your voice and you hear his voice. That's intimacy. Now, those that are intimate with the Lord will escape those things that are coming on the earth. That's the promise of God through Jesus. So, you say, well, <clears throat> first of all, how do we know that all the nations have already become independent? Well, we, there's good evidence here. Let me just quote this. In the 1940s, after World War II, 10 nations gained their, their freedom, independence. In the 1950s, there were eight nations. But in the 1960s, there were 45 nations that became independent. And in the 70s, there were 25 nations that became independent. Huge numbers of, uh, of people gained independence. And in the, in the 80s, only six nations. In the 90s, one. Namibia, the only one. Now, I'm not including the nations that were under Russia, because they already were independent nations, but they were swallowed up by Joseph Stalin in the 40s. So they don't count. But the other ones all count. And so we see that in the 60s and 70s was the time when most of the leaves came out on the trees of the other nations. Amen. And so that's done. That sign has already happened. And the sign of men's hearts failing them for fear, that has happened in the 54. H-bombs have been exploded on the earth several times. Not to mention fission bombs, nuclear bombs, been exploded the first time in 45. And from then on, now many nations have the fission bomb. We want to prevent it going to Iran. It looks like we're, that's a struggle at this time. And so the generation, it says, verse 32, that saw those signs begin to happen, verses 25 through 30, is the generation that will see them all. Folks, I want to make this practical for you. That is myself. I was born in 1934. Israel became a nation when I was 14 years old, and I knew there was something special there something special when they became a nation. Today, I'm 80 years old, and I'm going to see the return of Jesus in glory and be transformed and trans 
figured like he and lifted off this earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be also. You can be also. I want to appeal to you right now, seeing that these things are going to come to pass shortly. And I'm not going to give you a time. I have my own ideas. But everyone who proclaims the time, that's a mistake. It's like a fool. You don't do that. The Lord said, not even the Son of Man knows the day or the hour. But we can know the season. Amen. So we must look at the scriptures and look at what's going on with Israel and with the other nations and with the church of God. Amen. Those three. And if you combine those three and look at the signs, you're going to know Jesus is around the corner. Amen. If you would like to commit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ right now, I'll pray for you. And you can, you can be escaping the tribulation which is coming upon the earth because the Lord wants intimacy with his people. You want to be a son of God? Not the son, a son of God, a mature son. That's why we're going and planting Bible schools all over the world in the nations to take the Christians and to bring them to the point where they're acting like Jesus in the earth healing the sick, raising the dead, receiving miracles, and loving people into the kingdom. At this point, I'd like to ask you if you would like to be a son or daughter of the living God forever. Pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe your word that Jack has explained to me. Father, I want to love Jesus. I want to be part of your family. I believe you raised him from the dead. I ask you to forgive me my sins. Give me a new nature. Take away my old sinful nature. Give me a new nature that I may be a new man, a new woman in Christ. And I believe you, and I reach out for it, and I take it. In the name of Jesus, and I thank you for it. I thank you for it. If you prayed that prayer with me, I want to welcome you into the family of God. It's a good family. The family has power and authority, but also love. And you'll know us by our love. God bless you, and may he multiply you mightily. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Even though she might be nurtured for a short time. A brother, oh, we all have chances.